Hi, I'm back. And so um, these are just some notes. They're mostly for me, not for you. So if you can't see them, don't don't fret. I will be reading from that. <clears throat> so um, we're going to talk about Venus because Venus is prominent both in the uh, Kabbal Kabbalistic viewpoint of, two th of March 2017 and uh, astrologically because Venus went retrograde today. It will be retrograde for 42 days. Uh, it goes direct on April 15th. Uh, it went retrograde today. Venus is at 14 degrees of Aries. And if we look at the Sabian symbols from this book, okay, this is the book of uh, Dane Rogers, uh, an astrological mandala, okay. So every symbol, every uh, every degree of the zodiac has a symbol associated with it, and there are 360 degrees to the circle, so that's 360 um, symbols. And so there's symbols, and then there's explanations of the symbols. And the symbols were not um, brought to the planet by Dan Rudger, but he did some of the best, in my estimation, some of the best work on these symbols. And so, um, let's see, Venus retrograde on March 4th, that's today, 14 degrees of Aries, a serpent coiling near a man and a woman. And um, the, the coiling serpent really is the Kundalini energy, actually. And uh, as we know, when um, a, a man and a woman come together, they uh, can raise that kundalini energy. The symbol, however, according to Rudger, uh, one of the meanings is that we must, there must be polarization before there can be fulfillment. And so uh, we're at a very polarized time in this, uh, and certainly in, well, I, I could say in this country, but it's in this world. And, um, and so there is a, a, a polarization. Now, part of the reason for that is because we have Jupiter and Uranus in an opposition. Opposition is always about polarization, really. Uh, it's two ends of, it's the two uh, furthest ends of an axis. And so we have the greatest awareness, but we also have the greatest separation. And uh, Uranus and uh, Jupiter, that synodic cycle that began in 2010, 2011 in Aries and Pisces, has is at a halfway point. And so we are dealing with uh, becoming aware of uh, what seed was planted at that time. And when you're dealing with these two planetary archetypes, we are dealing with the expansion of our consciousness. And I don't think anybody can disagree with that our consciousness has been expanded since 2010. Remember 2010, uh, the Arab Spring, uh, the um, Occupy Wall Street. I mean, we became aware of a lot of things that we are uh, furthering our awareness upon. Now, the first part of that cycle, I know I was going to talk about Venus, but I'll talk about this cycle. The first part of that cycle, the first, say, six, six and a half years of that cycle, uh, our very internal time as um, the um, the planets move along the lower hemisphere of the zodiac, and then once we get to that opposition, uh, think we become aware of things. Things come out into the open, and now for the next six years or so, it's going to be about integrating our awareness uh, into society, so that we can uh, work together, and then ultimately see what works and what doesn't work and then release to start a new cycle. So so let's talk about Venus. I kind of got off, I got distracted. Um, so we do have the greatest amount of polarization. Now Venus will go retrograde and uh, it goes um, direct on the 15th of April, as I've said, and that actually occurs at um, 27 degrees of Pisces, and this is the saving symbol for that. Because the harvest moon illumines a clear autumn sky. And uh, the meaning is the time to reap what you have sown or what you have not sown. Now what's interesting about that particular day uh, is that uh, Venus is actually conjunct Chiron in Pisces. And uh, whenever we, uh, whenever a planet changes direction, it sort of stays at a degree for a while. And so we have actually had Venus at that 14th degree of Aries for a little while. We're going to have Venus at that 27th uh, degree of Pisces for a while. And so it sits there for quite a while, and then it starts to go direct. Um, what does 
Venus in Aries retrograde mean? Well, Venus retrograde means that we are reevaluating what is important to us. And I think in part what has been interesting is a couple of days ago the President of the United States had his first uh, real um, a talk to, I guess it was the members of Congress, and uh, he did a very good job reading the teleprompter, and he didn't really get off script except once, uh, I think, and, uh, and everybody was excited, uh, not me, but uh, everybody was excited that he was quote-unquote normal. Um, but uh, that being said, one of the things that he said was that we're going to fight, we're going to win a war. We're, it's about time we start winning a war and we're going to put all our money into the military. <sighs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm not too thrilled with that. And uh, this Venus retrograde in Aries, we will be looking at that. The other thing Venus rules is money. You know, uh, most of uh, America's... Uh, um, Money goes to uh, war, and we don't really have any enemies, really. I mean, not really, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to reevaluate that. We're going to reevaluate that. And not to mention uh, how much victim, how many victims of these crazy wars that we get into um, creates uh, on both sides. Not only the victims of the uh, people, and, and that's, the, that's the Chiron of Pisces right there, not only the victims of the people where the bombs are being dropped, but of course the karmic um, victimizations to a certain extent of us. I mean, do we really want that to be our legacy? Is that really we want our energy and money to go to? How do we, how do we um, change that? Venus is a feminine, and Aries is a, a warrior energy. And so it, it really is about the rise of the feminine. How, as, how will we be empower the feminine you know what are our values around that we have to start valuing ourselves. Aries is about self so these are all the issues that we're going to be going over with Venus in Aries and then in Pisces and so uh, just a couple more dates for you that are important um, Venus um, in Aries okay Venus first moved into Aries back on February 3rd now what's interesting about Aries, the first degree of Aries, is that that is the transition zone between uh, the cosmic, um, the great cosmic sea and life on earth. And so it is the point of birth. And so Venus has actually had, a three, will have three opportunities to hit the Aries point. So it's as if she is reborn. Now there's a whole... Um, there's a whole nother level of understanding Venus if we look at um, the um, the journey of Inanna, which I'm not going to talk about, but if you want to look that up on Google, there's a lot of great work about that. But these are the dates. This is the dates uh, of Venus. Venus moves into Aries, Aries point February 3rd. On April 2nd, Venus retrograde moves over the Aries point and then moves into Pisces. And then on April 28th, Venus goes back and hits the Aries point, moving into Aries. And then Venus doesn't actually get out of her shadow until May 20th. At that point, uh, Venus gets to the degree that she went retrograde. And so this, uh, even though it's 42 days retrograde, there really is about 105 days where Venus is either in pre-shadow, retrograde, or shadow. So we have been really thinking about... Uh, what our values are, what's important to us. We can see it in society. We can see it with the rise of the feminine. We can see it with the Women's March on my Washington and the Pussy Hats. We cannot really avoid this. And, 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 and well, I, we wouldn't avoid it, but there are certain people who perhaps wish that they could and they won't. Uh, it is time for us to rise up. It is time for us to appreciate the feminine. And what is the feminine? The feminine is about cooperation and love and togetherness. And uh, the males have had a, been in charge long enough and they have brought us to the brink of annihilation way too many times. It is time for us to rise up, rise up. So... I think that's all I want to say about it. There's a lot, oh, there's so much that can be said. But if I think of anything else or I want to say something else, I will do another video. This has really been a pleasure. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you again soon. Have a great March, 
If you'd like to contact me, I can be reached at Vicki, V-I-C-K-I, at theseedsoftransformation.com. Like this video, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. If you're in Wareham, Massachusetts, where we have our center, please stop by or give us a call. I do do readings over the phone, so that's not a problem. Have a great March.